right, now we're joined by Alice Walt, who's here uh, to talk about why we should vote yes on Initiative 735. So uh, go ahead, up to five minutes to tell us why to vote yes. All right. Well, you should vote for it because big money is taking over our democracy, and we need to stop it. Uh, the decision uh, of Citizens United by the Supreme Court allowed contributions by corporations and other special interests to go unabated, and so uh, the Initiative 735 is an advisory initiative to our members of Congress that they should support a, an amendment to the Constitution uh, to basically state that Corporations are not people with the same rights as uh, as human beings, and that money is not speech. And uh, Jeff said that you had a no on uh, Initiative 735 here to talk about why money is speech. And I would just say that money is a corrupting influence in in elections and in politics, and if it is not controlled, and, it, and as we've seen in the past uh, several elections since Citizens United, um, and a previous, a, a couple of previous um, Supreme Court decisions that um, money buys influence, money buys politics and bias candidates. And so uh, we believe that Congress should act, but we also believe that Congress will only act if we demand it. Uh, if we pass Initiative 735, we will be the uh, 18th state calling for an amendment to the Constitution. And we believe that once the numbers start getting up there, Congress will decide that it would be better to pass an amendment to the Constitution than to have a constitutional convention where they might be the real losers. So uh, we have all of our Democratic uh, members of Congress who have endorsed an amendment and endorsed Initiative 735. And uh, we're working on our two senators. Uh, both of them did support a constitutional amendment in the Senate in uh, 2014. And it was very close to being able to get over the hump to be voted on, but not quite. Didn't have 60 votes. In other states, the, a, an amendment uh, to overturn Citizens United has been uh, a bipartisan effort. In Illinois, it was actually the Republicans who brought the <laughs> resolution forward to the, legis uh, the legislature in Illinois and got it passed. Um, unfortunately, in Washington, we have not been so lucky. We have tried a number of times to get the legislature to pass a resolution to uh, Congress, and um, this year we came very close to having enough legislators sign a letter endorsing an initiative, uh, an amendment. It passed the House, and it failed to get a majority of signatures in the Senate by one signature. And that was our friend from the, uh, what county does he live in? <laughs> the guy over on the peninsula that we all love to Oh, it's too <laughs> yes. Still called the right. We actually had Mark Molosha, who's a Republican, uh, that signed the letter. And uh, so we're, Hopeful that this time around we collected 340,000 signatures to get it on the ballot. That was done by volunteers primarily. 
All but about 40,000 were collected by volunteers. Uh, Fixed democracy first, for I-735 paid for the uh, 40,000 signatures that we collected and paid for. So the caucuses have lasted, the state has endorsed it, King County has endorsed it, and so we think that every legislative district in the state should endorse it. Great, right, thank you. So now I'll open up to follow-up questions. Mary? I'm just curious because the thing uh, two years ago wasn't that calling for a constitutional convention and telling our legislature to ask for that. This time, we, the people are going straight to our congressional? No, or does the last legislature have to do something? Now, 1329, two years ago, was also to our members of Congress. Directly? Okay. Directly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the difference was that we went to the, we did an initiative directly to the people and not to the legislature. This, this time around, we went to the legislature, but we said, hey, we've got the signatures. We want, we prefer putting it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Frank listened to us, and he said, well, you want me to bring this to a vote? And we said, well, probably not, because this, the uh, Senate Republicans might want to fool around with it. and. <laughs> Yeah, add something to it or take something away, yeah. so just let it play. Mm -hmm. So instead, he had the House vote on a constitutional convention to overturn Citizens United. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they voted yes, yes on that? And they voted yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it passed it. Did it go to the Senate? It went to the Senate and it never ever it even, even got a hearing in the yeah. government state government operations. So this is the statement that will appear in the, um, oops, short of you, sorry. No, we're good. Okay. Uh, this is the statement that will appear in the voting panel. You mentioned that, uh, yeah. hmm? you mentioned that 18 states had passed this already. Yeah. Um, how many of those were by a vote of the people and how many were by legislatures? Yeah. Two. Two, two. Were by, two have been by initiative, Colorado and Montana. Interesting. And the other 16 were legislative? And the other 16 are legislative. Now, California has an initiative out there right now that's the same thing, but their legislature had also passed it. They just wanted to make everybody they don't want everybody to know about it and educate people about it. So they got it on the ballot. Did voters in other states have to push their legislature as far as yeah. they did? They have, okay, they so have pushed their legislature. The legislators to did it, but they were shoved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, there are a number of national organizations that have been pushing it. Mm -hmm. um, Move to amend uh, uh, public citizen, uh, common cause, uh, people for the American way, uh, a number of unions. Uh, unions have figured out that they can't really compete anymore mm -hmm. with the money. With the redistribution of money that has occurred. And here's this, I'll pass this out to this. This is the little brochure or the little slim jam that is being passed out and that we're showing up at fairs and, and public events. I don't know uh, that there will be enough printed to uh, be able to give them to every PCO. <laughs> I know there won't be. You need to distribute which is Mr. Ballots. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So one of the things if if the uh, district does endorse it, how much it costs to put a little ad in? Yeah, we'll send you that info. Just a few bucks. 
Yeah. Right. But so we'd be interested in doing that. Yeah. I am I'm on the steering committee and for one end and uh, and so they're interested in getting the word out as much as possible, but we really don't have the money to spend on getting it out. <laughs> So one of the things brought up by the no interviewee was um, that the um, corporate personhood provision would also apply to nonprofits, and that it might be a slippery slope or overreach um, to take away rights from certain organizations. Um, I wonder if you could just take a couple minutes and maybe raise and dismiss those arguments from your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Nonprofits are already limited in what they can spend on campaigns, and they cannot spend money on candidates. So, uh, and I think it would be a good thing if uh, 501c3s uh, and c4s uh, did have to disclose who they're giving money to, because now the, you can you can create a c4 and and take in money and pretend that, or say that you're an education organization. It's why the IRS is in such hot water, and because they're trying to now, <laughs> uh, you know, give, give the guy the boot who's the head of the IRS. And, <laughs> um, and because the 501c4s can create these educational efforts and claim that it's not political uh, when it's all negative about an issue or basically a candidate that they, the candidate that was our name. So, so the, the whole thing about, you know, oh, this is gonna really cripple nonprofits. Now the League of Women Voters has had some issues with um, the whole amendment process, but uh, they're even coming around <laughs> because they are recognizing that the issue of money in politics is is uh, just so damaging to democracy that they have, they are sort of backing away. And even the ACLU, we've not heard anything any um, negatives about Initiative 735. From the ACLU. So, David? Um, <clears throat> when, it's actually a little weird asking this question, when the Phil Schlafly just died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the ERA, uh, we knew the wording all those years, got to 35 out of 38 states needed. Uh, um, we're here. We're, we're talking about a recommendation, yeah. right? Uh, has somebody Something. tried to define what this? I mean, I thought the ERA was that it was could be, right? right. Article five of the Constitution. Um, is a several step process where. This is a recommendation for Congress to create an amendment that then would go to the states and it would go to the state uh, legislatures and uh, they would need to approve it. And, you know, uh, they would, and that's where the ERA got stuck, is in going to the state legislatures after Congress had prepared the Houston Amendment. We're not claiming that we have the wording for an amendment by any means. Uh, Congress will do that. And there, but there is a conference uh, this fall in October where they're going to work on uh, amendment language. Who's and, involved? Well, it's um, American Promise is the name of the organization that has 
started to put this whole thing together. But all of these all the organizations that I mentioned earlier are participating. And, and actually, Cindy Black, who is the who is uh, the campaign manager for the um, 735 campaign, is going and is speaking at the conference because they're interested in finding out how you organize or explain to other states how you organize a, a volunteer uh, grassroots effort where you don't have to raise a million or two million dollars yeah. to get it on the ballot or to get it passed. So, um, and there are a lot of notable speakers that are going to be there um, to talk about it. So, I'm hoping that something will come out of that. Time for maybe one more question. Anybody has one? You want to just take a couple minutes to tell us anything else you want us to know, or well, um, <laughs> take a two-minute closing. There two are a lot, of state, a lot of state legislators that have endorsed it. Practically all of the state uh, House Democratic members have endorsed Initiative 735, and uh, and the state senators as well. Uh, Pramila J. Paul is one of the signers of the statement that you. Uh, and um, and Brady too. No, not Brady. Not not because he wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It's just that Pramila was the person who who sent the was who involved. carried the she, it. She yeah, she yeah, was in okay. She was the senator who actually got all the signatures on the letter on the in the mm -hmm. state senate. Mm -hmm. um, so she was willing to sign it. So, we're happy to have her. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that's about it. I mean, the campaign is raising money, trying to raise money, and so welcome any contributions. <laughs> I have a few bumper stickers, and um, and this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> In case the audience for Yes on 735 also happens to be the audience against Trump. <laughs> All right. Well, well getting um, big money out of the elections is probably one of Bernie's biggest, you know, one of his major uh, efforts. And so he's been, uh, he's been harping on it for a while. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming by.